Your Serene Highness, Madame la Présidente, distinguished ministers, Mr. President of the Interpol Foundation for a Safer World and its board members, all distinguished delegation heads and delegations from the Interpol family, my dedicated Interpol staff, my dear special guests, ladies and gentlemen, bonjour, good morning, buenos dias, assalam alaikum. Let me begin by recognizing and saying hello to Interpol staff members who could not be with us here in person, but are here with us in spirit. If you are watching this live, we miss you. If you are not watching this live, we still miss you. Your Serene Highness, we are all honored and humbled seeing how much time and energy you and the Monegasque authorities have devoted to hosting us, addressing us, and making us feel so warmly welcomed. You also have accepted the invitation by His Excellency Elias Murr, the President of the Interpol Foundation for a Safer World, to become the first honorary president of the Interpol Foundation, whose board held its first meeting right here in Monaco yesterday. We thank you. I thank you. Sadly, these remarks will be my last as Interpol Secretary General at a ministerial conference. My remarks will last roughly four and a half minutes, and I ask for your patience. Gaining your trust, the trust of my staff, and acting in the best interest of the organization have been my number one priority as your Secretary General. I wanted each of you and your countries to place your trust in the fact that as long as I was your Secretary General, every ounce of energy that I had every bit of my intellectual power, all of the passion contained in me would be devoted to protecting and keeping your countries, your citizens, your businesses, and your visitors safe. I wanted your trust that if and when something went wrong and your country suffered a tragedy, whether criminal in nature, man-made, or a natural disaster, that Interpol would be in contact with you and get there to help you as fast as possible. You would never, ever, ever be alone in times of need. I wanted you to trust that I love being the Secretary General of each and every one of your countries, as well as of each and every staff member, irrespective of their nationality, race, religion, gender, or position. I feel so proud and honored to be Interpol's Secretary General that you can likely see and feel my joy when I recognize you, give you an Interpol pin, hug you, take a picture with you, or shake your hand. This enthusiasm is why my staff made sure that over 14 years, 14 years, I would visit each and every one of your countries because they knew, and as all of you found out, that I wanted to see what your country was like firsthand, wanted to learn from you, wanted to be there to make sure that your ministry, your police, your Interpol National Central Bureau would receive greater support because of my visit. I was not going to step down as your Secretary General until I had visited each and every one of our 190 member countries. It took 14 years, but I completed this journey on the 7th of October in Iceland, as you saw. Now, not even a month later, we've traveled together to Monaco, where it is great to once again see all of your faces. I hope that together we can make the tools and services of Interpol better known and used throughout the world. I believe that the input and participation we will receive from you during this General Assembly will help us counter the insidious nature of terrorism, undermine the motivation of organized crime, and paralyze cyber criminals everywhere. And I know that your support for our new projects, training initiatives, 
and innovations will be invaluable as we work to broaden our effort against these threats that confront us all. The driving force behind all of this work is the Interpol staff, whom according to my notes, you're supposed to see standing before you. I'm still Secretary General for three more days. Up. Let's go. Go, come up, come up. It's amazing how quickly they forget. The driving force behind all of this work is the staff whom you see standing before you. The staff watching and not watching the General Assembly live from Interpol offices around the world. The staff who've come and gone from more than 100 countries and who are above all dedicated to the ideal and vision of Interpol. They are the ones who have been there and will always be there for you in a time of need. And their sacrifices and dedication have made all of Interpol's achievements possible during my time here. They are the ones to whom I dedicate the video that you just saw. They're the ones, each and every word, award and honor I received as Secretary General is because of them. If I have achieved my goal of gaining your trust, then I kindly ask you for two more favors. I ask for the support of each of your countries in ensuring that Mr. Jurgen Stock is unanimously elected as your next Secretary General so that the successes that we have achieved together can continue. And I also ask you that when I'm gone, and I will go, you and your countries give President Balistrazi, the Executive Committee, newly elected Secretary General Stock, the dedicated staff of Interpol, some of whom you see here, your Interpol National Central Bureaus, and the Interpol Foundation for a Safer World, even more support and more love than you've given me during my 14 years as your Secretary General. If you can do this for Interpol, then together we will all turn back crime and be one step closer to a world safer for this and future generations. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. Shukran.